Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys today. I'm really excited to uh, talk to you about some work that we've been doing at UC Santa Barbara with my colleagues listed over there. Um, there's quite a few of us. It's a big project. And uh, I want to draw your attention to two blue names over there that were both high schoolers when this project started. So I don't know how often high schoolers get published in uh, top tier venues, um, but this is one of them. So this work is not, ah. This work is about two things. It's about binaries, and it is about uh, offensive techniques on binaries, so attacking these binaries. Um, we want to find vulnerabilities in the binaries, and we want to uh, exploit those vulnerabilities, and we really want to understand how um, the current state of the art lends itself toward uh, these approaches. Um, and our motivations are twofold. One is we're really interested in the current state of the art. We're interested in uh, what are the limitations of current offensive binary analysis techniques, where they can be improved. And this is very relevant because right now we're experiencing an explosion of binary code. Of course, high-level languages have always compiled down to binary, and you have to you know, run binary in your CPU at some point. But now we're having this uh, IoT renaissance where everything is a smart device. And these smart devices often run uh, binary firmware and often run multiple different binary firmware uh, images on different sub-devices. So we have a lot of binary code that can now be attacked and we need to understand uh, how um, current techniques are at identifying and exploiting these vulnerabilities. Um, and DARPA has recognized this uh, need and created the DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge. It's a competition for an automated binary analysis uh, framework and binary exploitation framework. They put a lot of money on the table, which of course is also a good mot motivator. Uh, but this is their statement that this is important, right? And so we approached uh, the idea of um, analyzing binary, uh, offensive binary techniques from our standard scientific perspective. In science, we look at existing work in the field, uh, use it to get some idea of how to improve it, and output some new work back to the community. And we did the same thing. We looked at uh, existing binary analysis techniques. Uh, and then we kind of hit a uh, interesting problem in that these existing binary analysis techniques, the ones that publish source code so that you can build off of them and the ones that you know, publish enough of an idea that you can build off of it, uh, the release tools have some problems, right? And so there's a set of these problems. One is that you know, sometimes even if the tool is published, it's not open sourced. So it's very hard to uh, build off of it. Even when it is open source, sometimes it's basically not open source. So if you write your tool in a language that is extremely hard to use and extend, uh, like sometimes happens in our field, uh, it's very hard to build it, something off of it. Uh, even when they are open source, they're often very inflexible, or they uh, lack support for uh, multiple architectures. So they're very architecture dependent. Uh, and if you're interested in analyzing firmware, x86 doesn't cut it. Even x86 and ARM alone doesn't cut it. You need a very wide uh, support of architectures. And these tools are not composable. They're also probably not compostable either. But they're definitely not composable uh, in a very easy way because uh, you know, if they're not really made to build off of each other and extend each other, it's hard to combine them. So you have symbolic execution and you have some static analysis. And uh, combining these different tools from different papers is non-trivial and sometimes impossible. And this is a problem for two things, for two reasons. One is that it is hard to understand what the real uh, impact of the work was. Right? How much did the work really improve over uh, the previous state of the art um, versus how much it you know, has just a different implementation and happens to get different results? So it's hard to compare these things on an equal footing because all the tools are implemented very differently. And it's very hard to build off of because if you want to combine uh, multiple approaches to create the next generation of binary analysis, it's uh, tricky if you don't have a solid footing that can support all of your, uh, what you want to do. So we had the idea of 
making a binary analysis framework that solves these problems, that uh, allows us to uh, explore in a very systematized way how different analyses fit together, how uh, symbolic execution can assist uh, static analysis, how uh, fuzzing can uh, get looped into the whole thing, and what effects this has, right? So we're really trying to systematize uh, the field of binary analysis so that we can have a standard base on which we can cr uh, create approaches, compare them, and see what uh, happens and how well they work. Uh, so this binary analysis uh, framework we released and made is called Anger, and uh, this is the framework on which we uh, did this study, uh, this survey of offensive binary analysis techniques. And Anger is extremely modular. Um, it's made to be compostable and probably compostable as well. Um, and it's made out of modules that fit together and are very configurable. You can take these modules, you can uh, split them apart, mix them together, and really build different types of analyses. So you might combine uh, different modules to create dynamic symbolic execution engine that uses value set analysis to resolve bounds on symbolic variables. You might have a static analysis system that also uses concolic tracing to try to prove that the uh, detections are not false positives. Um, you could have a concolic tracing engine and integrate it with another tool because Anger is very flexible. It's meant to be used as a, bi as a library. Um, so you can integrate, for example, a fuzzer to understand how uh, symbolically assisted fuzzing compares to just normal symbolic execution. And all of this is on a single base, so it's really comparable. So I want to really stress this because if you have different implementations of different techniques, it's very hard to tell if the improvement was from the implementation or from the technique. With Anger, with this work, you can really look at it on a single implementation and say, OK, that theoretical advance really did this uh, to the results. And so uh, I mentioned Anger has a couple of different modules. Uh, it has a bunch, and I don't have time to go into all of them here, but I'll go into an overview of modules that are also useful uh, outside of Anger as kind of a general uh, toolkit in binary analysis. So we created a binary loader, which um, allows uh, an, an analyst uh, to look at a binary and get a view of how it would look in memory if it's loaded. It's a non-trivial process, and our binary loader supports uh, ELF binaries, uh, Windows binaries, Cybergrand challenge binaries, and uh, all sorts of binaries that IDA supports, because it could use IDA as a backend to load them as well. This is very useful. We see a lot of people using this outside of Anger. Um, we also created a Python wrapper for libvex. We use vex as the intermediate language in Anger, allowing us to use to support many different architectures. Uh, we see this being used in the community as well, a lot in research, actually, over the last couple of years. Um, and we created a uh, really useful module that abstracts data model domains, right? So you have uh, symbolic variables in symbolic execution, and you have value sets and uh, strided intervals in value set analysis. And we have a module that allows us to abstract these into a common uh, representation, basically an intermediate representation for data domains, which really allows us to uh, compose these different analyses because we can switch from symbolic execution to value set analysis on the fly as needed. Um, so we have all of these cool uh, things. So what did we do with them? Well, we uh, did many things. One of them is uh, this study uh, on how well current binary analysis techniques and offensive binary analysis techniques work on the CyberGrant challenge. Right, so if you had a research lab like ours and you wanted to participate in the CGC, could you use existing techniques uh, to basically really apply them in kind of this real world-like setting? Um, and to participate in the CGC, you need to do two things. You need to analyze binaries and you need to exploit these binaries. You also need to patch binaries, but here we are focusing on uh, the offensive techniques. So we did a survey of the existing works 
uh, the existing work that we wanted to systematize uh, in this project, and we picked out these kind of core papers. Uh, they cover everything from binary analysis for vulnerability discovery to automatic exploit generation to automatic exploit hardening against software mitigation techniques, uh, software vulnerability mitigation techniques. Uh, and there's actually a bunch more papers, of course, that we draw on. These are kind of the core ones. And we implemented a lot of different analyses to evaluate, right? Everything from uh, kind of these base analyses like control flow graph recovery through symbolic execution with various different optimizations that we can combine and, and uh, compare and contrast on a similar uh, implementation base. We implemented a lot of uh, static analyses, such as value set analysis, um, and we uh, tested how well it interacts with uh, fuzzing, if you have uh, uh, assisted, uh, symbolically assisted fuzzer. We uh, looked into crash replaying, uh, a lot of this sort of stuff, and we invite you to read in the paper um, how uh, we designed and implemented this on a common base in Anger. Um, so, of course, we uh, evaluated all of these analyses and uh, compared how they uh, fare against each other. And uh, our data set was 131 binaries that DARPA released as the qualification event for the Cyber Grand Challenge. And these binaries are really interesting from a research perspective because they're very diverse. They have different authors. Their sizes are everything from a couple of kilobytes to 10 megabytes. Uh, 10 megabytes is roughly the size of QEMU, I believe. So that's a fairly beefy binary. Uh, they have a lot of different types of vulnerabilities, uh, everything from null pointer dereferences to uh, function point overrides, vtable uh, trickery, all sorts of uh, really subtle vulnerabilities and some obvious vulnerabilities. And they provide a ground truth. So we can really say, hey, this detection we found, uh, you know, how, how many uh, false positives did this, you know, tool uh, create. So was this detection a false positive? Or uh, did we find all of the bugs? Uh, and of course, we'd never find all of the bugs, but we can try. Um, and the binaries are uh, simple in a way that allows us to uh, save on implementation time in the way that they interact with a very simplified environment model of the operating system. So we implemented all of these techniques uh, on, and ran them on all of these binaries. And we found some interesting results. So for one thing, we found that in our data set, uh, our fuzzer that we kind of used as a control uh, check uh, of uh, offensive binary analysis found almost three times as many vulnerabilities as basically any other single technique. And it found more than the union of the rest of them combined. Right, so this is very interesting. Uh, we used AFL as our fuzzer, um, and AFL, it turns out, is extremely good. So it would be interesting to further look into why our results differ from LAVA's results in this sense. Uh, but uh, we looked into uh, why on our binaries fuzzing was king, and it turns out that this is because in the CGC binaries at least, most of the crashing uh, conditions occurred about 10,000 basic blocks uh, into, um, or 100,000 basic blocks into the execution of the application, right? And fuzzing found those. And symbolic execution before reaching those tends to suffer a state explosion. So symbolic execution, like Tim said earlier, uh, suffers from uh, this inability to penetrate very deep into an application but on these binaries, we didn't see fuzzing having the same problem. Fuzzing actually got fairly deep. This is also actually symbolically assisted fuzzing, so that uh, might also explain why it was able to penetrate deeper. But fuzzing alone also did pretty comparably. Um, so we did this study. Uh, we implemented this uh, tool upon which the next generation of binary analysis can be built, and so we open sourced it. So now we hope to provide a base for future binary analysis research. Uh, the code is on GitHub. You can uh, grab it right now. Actually, the, um, there's a Docker image 
that you can just run with uh, your uh, scripts and it'll execute them in Angular. Um, there's documentation, there's an IRC channel. So if you really want to push this as a tool in the toolbox of security researchers. Uh, feel free to ask us for help. Uh, we're very responsive and uh, really excited for the next generation of binary analysis. Anger was built by a very large team. Uh, this is all of us from UCSB that have worked on Anger in some capacity. Um, and there's more uh, people that are external collaborators and it's really a uh, you know, fairly serious project that we're pushing forward. And with that, I would uh, like to open it up for any questions you guys might have. All right, any qu questions? So while we're waiting, um, I think one of the benefits of having this extensive study on the same platform is a quite a good uh, plus. So the question would be, when you implemented all these different approaches in the same single platform, did you do any additional testing to prove that the algorithm that was presented by so-and-so is indeed in reflected correctly on my test bed? It's a, it's a tough yeah, that's problem because a lot of these, um, a lot of, a lot of these papers have very targeted evaluations. Yes, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah um, so for example, there are papers that uh, target the state explosion problem, right? And they have a mm -hmm. motivating example and then they show that they work on the motivating example. Mm -hmm. And we work on the motivating example. Yes. Well, past that, it's uh, hard to um, you know, analyze it further, right? We feel we implemented this correctly, it works like it says in the paper, but does it really work the same as the original implementation? For open source ones, you can check, but a lot of these things aren't open source and the, or the tools are just That's plain right. not available. Right. Yeah. So for those, you can't really check. Um, we've done a lot of uh, applications of anger. Let's see. Oh, no, mine got disabled. Um, we've done a lot of uh, applications on anger um, in terms of, you know, of course, research on what we feel should be solvable with these techniques, but also in the CGC and in uh, uh, Capture the Flag competitions. Mm -hmm. last, yeah. uh, actually, last weekend at DEF CON, right. Anger got first blood on uh, the top reversing challenge at DEF CON. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, against human hackers. Um, but, and we feel that from our results, it makes sense. You know, when we see that, hey, there's a path explosion here, we look mm -hmm. into it, Okay, that makes sense. When there are, uh, something doesn't find a binary uh, crash, we look into the binary and we see, okay, well, from a theoretical perspective, this would overwhelm this analysis and that would overwhelm that analysis. Okay. But kind of we, we do what we can with the openness that is available. Yeah, I totally understand. Thank you for the detailed answer.